A four-star U.S. Air Force general telling his officers to prepare for war with China within two years, instructing them to drill service members with, quote, the full understanding that unrepentant lethality matters most. General, general Mike Minahan, head of the 50,000-member Air Mobility Command, warning, quote, United States presidential elections are in 2024 and will offer Xi a distracted America. Doug Bandau is a senior fellow at the Cato Institute specializing in foreign policy, and he joins us now. Doug, what do you make of this general's assessment? Is it accurate? Do you agree with it? I think it's excessive. China is a very serious challenge to America, but it's important not to treat war as inevitable. A number of European countries did that before World War I, and that accelerated the slide towards conflict. No one wants a war in this case. It'd be horrible for both countries. So we don't want to treat it that way. What would be that red line that would cross us over there? Is that Taiwan, a move towards Taiwanese independence? Is, is that what would cause it? The general view is that China is willing to put up with a certain amount of a kind of separatist activity, but any move they saw as going towards independence would force them to act. And most policymakers, I think, are convinced China would take military action then. So that would be the danger move. That would potentially be the red line of conflict. And then the U.S. would have to decide if it was willing to go to war with a major conventional power with nuclear weapons. Are we ready for that? I don't believe so at the moment. A lot depends on what our allies would do. And frankly, we need a conversation with the American people. Are they prepared for a real war where American aircraft carriers could be sunk, planes could go down, ships could be destroyed? This wouldn't be Iraq. This wouldn't be Afghanistan. This would be the real deal. How worried are you that our military is focused and, and that they are distracted by world policies, identity politics, even climate change? I think the challenge here is that what the U.S. government and the U.S. military do best is deal with major crises that other countries can't deal with. And you're quite right. There are a lot of distractions out there that if we want to be prepared for a war with China, you've got to focus on that. It's not the Middle East. Frankly, it's not even Europe that the Europeans are much better you know, able to uh, deal with. We've got to focus on this. And again, we want to make this a very conscious decision. It's not something you sleepwalk into. This would be an extraordinary conflict. And there have been war games that have obviously been played. How do those turn out? How does America turn out in those war games? A lot of them the U.S. loses. Even when the U.S. wins, it's a catastrophic cost. There was a recent one that had the sinking of two U.S. carriers. You know, you have 5,000 sailors on a carrier going down, losing lots of aircraft. So this, again, we can't go into this assuming we would win, and we can't go into this assuming the Chinese would back down. This is for them is an existential issue. It's a long ways away from America. Taiwan is as close to China as Cuba is to America. Imagine China trying to defend Cuba from the United States. Yeah, no, it's uh, what you're saying is 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 truly alarming. Um, do you think that the Biden administration is taking this seriously? I think they are. I think they recognize the danger here. It's good, frankly, that we're getting some communication again between Beijing and Washington. We've got to talk. There have to be dialogue here. Because, uh, again, it's easy to see major powers kind of sleepwalking into a conflict, making assumptions that the other side won't get involved. Both countries and both governments have to know what's going on and what their interests and red lines are. Yeah. I'm not as confident as you, Doug. I feel like our president is compromised by the Chinese, um, and that concerns me um, in this situation. But I appreciate your analysis and you coming on our show to share it. Happy to do so. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.